It's time for a design exercise. How many different ways are there to make a four-sided pyramid in SketchUp? Hey there, it's Matt here, uh, and I've compiled the total encyclopedic compendium, to quote a hero, of uh, every single way there is to make a four-sided pyramid in SketchUp. Um, it's not even worth trying to trump me in the comments because I've identified every single one, no more, no less. And um, so I'm just going to walk you through how to make each one right now. These are them, but uh, we don't need them. So let's delete them and start over. I'm using a metric template for this. Uh, all these triangles, triangles, all these pyramids are going to have a base, a rectangular base of one meter by one meter. And uh, of course, this is the first way, the auto fold. This is the classic way in SketchUp. You uh, make an X, split this face up into four, and then use the move tool. Uh, without anything selected, you can bring this middle point up. As long as you're in the blue axis, make sure you're not in any other direction. Uh, you can use the up arrow to snap to that. And let's say 0.8 height. There we go. That's our first pyramid. One thing to note with this method, you're not gonna have a bottom. So you wanna close that up. It's just good practice to keep everything uh, solid. Number two is what I call the center line stitch method. So what that means is I'm gonna use um, inferencing here to inference this midpoint and then this midpoint. Or I can find the center of that square and draw it up again in that blue axis, 0.8. And now I have my, my peak of my pyramid. I'm just going to, as the name suggests, stitch this together one by one. A couple things wrong with this pyramid, it's inside out. So I'll triple click uh, and reverse faces. This is also best modeling practice. And of course we have an interior edge here that we don't need, it's superfluous. So I'll use X-ray with X to get in there and delete it. And now we have two identical ones in two different ways. But we're just getting started. Uh, the next method is the push-pull stitch method. So I'll push this base up, and I could either type in 0.8 or just inference this known value of 0.8 high. And again, I'll make that, uh, that X across the top, as I did in the first example. Now I have my peak point here, and what I'm going to do is stitch inside this uh, rectangular prism. You can't see anything when I'm doing that, but if I turn on x-ray mode, you can see that face was created. And again, peak down to the point, peak to the point, turn off x-ray mode. Yeah, it's a little messy. We got a little cleanup to do, um, getting rid of that extra stuff we don't need. And this one, we can reverse this face and we have our pyramid. That would be push-pull stitch method. Okay. We also have the push-pull move method, which once I push this up again to that same height, same kind of steps as before, X on the top. And this refers back to that original uh, first case that we did with using auto fold. If I go to move without anything pre-selected, I can select on these points on the vertices here and drag them down to their corresponding points on the base. And I'm left with my pyramid. And here's kind of a sub way to do it. I can also move the edges. So I'll move this edge from this midpoint down to this midpoint and this one down to this one. Pyramid. Um, alternatively, you can see I moved from point, I moved from edge, I can also move from face, which is, you know, four, uh, or not four, but just edges that are coplanar identifying a face, and I'll move all these down at once. Now, I could, you know, move from a particular point, but because I know this is exactly 0.8 high, I can just choose any arbitrary point, and then as long as I'm moving in that blue, again, I can either use the shift key to lock to it or press that up arrow key. And then as long as I'm moving in the right direction, as long as I'm moving down, I can just type in 0.8 and I'll move exactly to the right spot to make our fourth pyramid. 
if you are liking this video, give us a like down below. But uh, let's move on to number five. Number five is the, we had to get to it eventually, folks. The follow me, one of the follow me methods. This is the follow me additive method is what I'm calling it. So again, I'm going to use that, uh, those midpoint inferences to find the center of our uh, base here and point eight up. And then I'm going to draw the triangle profile that I'll use for follow me. Now follow me uses uh, a path, which is a series of connected edges. So I'll select my edges that I want for my path, select the follow me tool and select my profile. And that my friends is the follow me additive method of making a uh, pyramid, which of course leaves the follow me subtractive method. So in that case, what I'm going to do is push pull up to that same height. I'll use the line tool to go from this midpoint here down to one of the edges. And uh, as I alluded to earlier, a face, like all geometry in SketchUp is either edges or faces. A face is just defined as the four uh, coplanar edges that are connected. So in this case, instead of following, like selecting the path by getting these one by one, I can just use the face for that because this is defined as those uh, connected edges. Follow me, profile, pyramid. Bang. Okay. <laughs> um, now we are going to start our next base, not with a rectangle, but with a line. So this time I'm going to draw uh, this triangle first, again, that same height, and make that triangle. Uh, this one is called the intersect with selection method, which means we will need um, two triangular prisms to intersect. So I'll pull this long, it doesn't really matter, arbitrarily long, as long as it um, is long enough to overlap itself. And then I'll triple click to select all this geometry. And then what I want to do is rotate a copy of it 90 degrees so that we our intersection is that pyramid. So I'll hit Q, which is the rotate tool. And it wants to snap to um, the different planes here, but I want it to stay on the blue plane. So okay, the up arrow key has been really helpful for us today. We're going to use it again. Midpoint. And, and then I'm looking in this bottom uh, tooltip area where it says copy, toggle copy is option. So I'm going to hit option. I believe that's control on a PC. And then now when I rotate that, you can see I'm making a copy. I could try to snap to 90 degrees or I could just type in 90. And uh, although these faces are overlapping, they're not actually intersecting. So triple click and right click to find the intersect faces uh, on that right click uh, menu and with selection, intersect faces with selection. Now you can see that this edge breaks up those faces. Again, I made kind of a mess, but with just a little cleanup, we can get to the point where <laughs> all these extra edges are gone and we have our perfect pyramid once again. Now you may have been able to infer this, but uh, we're going to start in the same uh, way that we started this last one. We're going to use intersect but we're going to use intersect um, with the solid tools. Uh, and to do that, we're going to follow the same steps as last time by making this too long uh, triangular prism. But before we rotate it, we're actually going to triple click to select all that geometry and make this a group. Uh, in order to use solid tools, we need these items to be solid, meaning they're watertight, manifold, no extra geometry, no holes or anything. And you can see in entity info when I select that, that is a solid. Same kind of rotation here with that up arrow. Make a copy, 90 degrees. And here is where we go to tools, solid tools, intersect. Wants me to select the first group, the first solid, and the second solid. And that's solid because we just intersected those to make our next pyramid. Great. Okay. Here's where things start to get a little tricky. These were all the same height, right? We knew the exact uh, dimension from the very peak all the way to the base. But there's going to be situations probably where you're trying to draw a pyramid where you don't have 
all that information. So if we do start with that same base again, but we now know the, the height of this pyramid, uh, of, sorry, of this triangle. We know this dimension, okay? Not the peak to the base dimension, but the kind of the long edge of the triangle. And how we're gonna do that is start drawing from this midpoint in plane with this bottom here. That's gonna be point eight. And then we can um, finish up that triangle to make this edge. Now, I need to rotate this to a specific point, but I don't know exactly where that point is. One way to find it is we're going to inference that center again, midpoint, midpoint, get the center. I'll just draw this in the blue, uh, some arbitrary direction, and I'm going to use the arc tool to solve this problem, not uh, using the a shortcut that'll get us to the two point arc tool. We want to go to regular arc here. And then I'll start um, with that red plane locked from this midpoint all the way to this end. And then I can see coming along here, as I get closer to this edge, I can see that intersection point. That is the point that I want, right? This end point right here is where I want to rotate this. So again, Q for rotate, starting at the midpoint, this uh, point of the triangle, and then I can zoom in to snap right to that endpoint. And I have this triangle selected, rotate from the corner, make a copy, 3x, we're inside out again. And again, we have that, that one interior uh, reference geometry piece, which we can get rid of with x-ray. Okay, great. That's how we did it with the, uh, the known height of the triangle, which again was 0.8. Okay, so what if I don't know the height of the peak to the base? I don't know the, the length of this triangle height, but I do know the angle that I wanna make a, a pyramid. I know the angle of the faces. Here's where our protractor tool protractor tool comes in handy. So I'll use the protractor, I'll lock to uh, here, the green plane, and then go from this midpoint to this one, um, some angle, let's make it a weird angle, 47.8. Okay, and then I just need the same thing from this side, 47.8, and I have this intersection piece between those two guides, which will let me stitch together that pyramid as I did before. Edit, delete guides, reverse, and now this pyramid has sides of angle exactly 47.8 degrees. Great, that's the protractor angle uh, method is what I'm calling that. Don't worry, we still have one to go. This one, the leaning ladder face method. Um, okay, so I don't know any dimension on this uh, pyramid that I want to make except this. I know this edge, I know this exactly, I want this edge to be 0.8. I'm just loving 0.8s. Uh, on this video. So how we're gonna do that is, again, draw in this direction over here. This is an arbitrary amount. I'll start from this corner, and I wanna go 0.8 exactly. I'll select that edge, use Q for rotate, and go from this to here. Now I might have to zoom in to see this exact point. I wanna to get to the inference. Here we go, right there from radius on edge. Then I know that this, this line is exactly 0.8. And when I clean this up, um, we're gonna make this one a little bit more interesting. So I'm actually gonna do this off axis a bit. Um, I know, so 
it's a little bit harder to inference the middle of that square using my midpoint trick here. So I'll just do that X trick that we did in the very first uh, example and draw this up again an arbitrary amount. Uh, now I want this again to rotate. So last time I used that red snap point, uh, snapping to that plane, it doesn't work the same. No matter which plane I snap to, it's not the right one. But with the rotate tool, we can click and drag to identify a rotation plane. And then when I let this go, I can choose the start point of my rotation and the end point. Again, I'm looking for that magical from radius on edge that we've nicknamed the leaning ladder inference. Let's get rid of all this extra stuff. We don't need this. I'll just reverse this face now. And up arrow, I can go from the peak here, make a copy, 3x, and what a beautiful pyramid with 0.8 length sides. Uh, that's it. I nailed every single one and how to do it very uh, succinctly and cleanly. Uh, I'm sure you all understand and have no way to prove me wrong. Uh, if you do, I suppose you can leave a comment, but there's no need because um, I covered them. Uh, again, if you like this video, give us a thumbs up, please. Uh, hit the like button down below and subscribe. We like making videos that you guys want to see, so let us know if there's any other types of videos you want to see on the SketchUp YouTube channel. That's it for me, and uh, hey, take it easy.